George! Go on, Dave! You're nit. Thanks, Sarge. <laughs> Watch your back. <laughs> Sorry. Get rid of that lot, will you? Sarge. Come on, bunch up! <laughs> Yeah, as long as this one's not sick all over me. Right, right. take number three then. Come on, mate. Mr. Parker, can you hear me? Uh, do you want a solicitor? Forget it, Dave. We'll interview him later. Yeah, but don't you think we? We all know what can happen if you get over eager. Stephen. Last night you were at a party at number three Elcott Road. Do you remember that? We were all there, that's where we picked you up. Yeah, I was there. Do you remember what you had in your possession when you were arrested? No. Well, when we caught you, you tried to dispose of some pills and some powder. Those substances are now awaiting laboratory analysis. And I think the lab will confirm them to be 21 pills of ecstasy and 20 grams of cocaine, over a thousand pounds worth of drugs. You also had 200 pounds of cash on you. Yeah, I remember having some money on me, but I don't know nothing about drugs. Did you go to that party with the intention of selling drugs? No. Were you aware that many of the youngsters at the party were taking drugs? No. Do you know what a Class A drug is, Stephen? Well, let me tell you that I believe what you had on you last night are Class A drugs. Do you know what possession with intent to supply means? I've already checked your police records, Stephen. Supplying drugs is one thing. Supplying them to kids is something else. Look, I swear it, none of the drugs at that party came from me. On my life. I don't deal to kids. I've never done it. I don't need to do it. But look at my record. So what are you doing there then, eh? Why weren't you at a proper rave? What were you doing hanging around at a kid's party? Eh? I was visiting my girlfriend. Alright? She lives there. There. This is your rubbish. None of your business. This is a perfectly good sandwich. What did you throw it away for? It's a prawn sandwich past its sell by day. I wouldn't eat it if I were you. But I haven't had any breakfast. Excuse me? Yeah. This is the uh, tent then. What did it look like? No, it's alright. Just brush your soil and it should be fine. How long have you been living in the tent? This is my first day. Uh, not long. Do you want to sign my petition? What's it for? Stop the road being built through this field. There you go, just sign there. It's a shame to let it go to waste. Donald! Stubborn. You'll probably die of food poisoning. What kind of school is this? Uh, don't worry, just sign your name. Right. Thanks. Oh, I nearly forgot. Letter for you. Thanks. Here, you couldn't take him with you? I don't think so. Hiya. Yes, sir. Tony Langham, DC Line, Sunil CID. All right, Tony. Turn the engine off. You come to release me? Not exactly, no. We're all off to see your mummy. We have authority to search the premises, Mrs. Langham. You don't give up easily, do you? We've got a warrant. I'm sure you have. 
Fine. That's what it takes to convince you. Thank you. Do you want to, uh... I'll take it downstairs. Off to you. OK, if we start in there. You ain't going to search the old lot, are you? Sure. Why not? He would have graduated too if he hadn't gotten in with the wrong company. How do you mean? You know the types. Which are layabouts. He's been in trouble before then. Misunderstanding? Yes, I'm sure. A few of them were caught smoking marijuana in their rooms one night. Tony took the blame for it. That was very noble of him. Oh, his father couldn't afford one of those big solicitors like the rest. The university agreed to say no more about it, so long as he packed his bags. Well, they threw him out. Half the universities across the country would be empty if they started doing that. Well, they tried to say he was selling drugs on the campus. Like I said, it was a misunderstanding. They seem to follow your son around. You're all the same, aren't you? Person makes one mistake and they're branded. We've got a young lad back at the station who's paying for your son's mistakes right now. Oh, you're getting real warm now. Oh, come on, Mrs Langham. Paul came round here to do Tony a favour. Is that what he told you? He's got it in for Tony. You don't like Paul, do you? It's not a question of like, it's a question of family. Tony's not too keen on the business, is he? Well, it's not his thing, is it? What is his thing? He always wanted what I wanted. And what exactly was that? I wanted to get out of this dump. Don't you think Bob wanted that as well? I don't know what he wants anymore. Well, why don't you ask him? Nothing gets to Bob. Definitely getting colder. Your old mum looks after you pretty well, doesn't she? You're wasting your time. Yeah, it must be nice having somebody look after you like that. What is this? Do you like to cook, do you? Do a little bit of weighing up. I don't believe this. So tell me, Tony, am I hot or cold? Huh? Interview recommenced with Tony Langham, officers present. 
Our DC lights and DC skates. Time now is 17.53. I must remind you, Tony, that you're still under caution. You understand? Yeah. So, when do you start dealing then? Ever since he took me on. Man cannot live by ice cream alone. And your father never suspected? Why should he? It's rife up there in those estates. So you thought you'd get yourself a cut? Why not? That's the benefits of a so-called free market economy. Supply and demand. Like playing the hard man, don't you, Tony? Couldn't give a damn for anyone else. Except, of course, you're very protective over your mummy, aren't you? Oh, she's in a right spin. She's not sure who to visit first, you or your old man in hospital. Well, I'll tell you you're asking about her, shall I? Either way, your father's not going to come out of this very well, is he? Look, he brought this on himself. Mum didn't want him to buy this poxy business in the first place. She's the real reason you're doing this, isn't she? Your dad couldn't keep up with her expensive tastes, so you decided to go out and show him how it was done. I wanted more for myself than an ice cream van and a mortgage. It's just a question of knowing how to get it. No, Tony. It's all to do with family. Your mother said that. So what was all that aggro about between you and Dougie Griffiths today? He wants the estate all to himself. He likes to play the heavy. Griffiths threatening you, is he? He thinks he's a big man. He's got no brains, though. We undercut him. No one wants his stuff. So who do you work with? Come on, Tony, stop messing us around. Don Bradshaw. I knew him at university. He supplies me. Right. You're going to set up a meeting with this Don Bradshaw, and we're going to be there. It's over, Tony. The only way you can help your mother now is by cooperating. I don't get it. What's a bloke like Bob Langham done to deserve a son like that? Families. Who needs them? Okay, boys, we're in business. What the hell? Right, go, 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 go!